Now we're going to add one final element to this. When we reach the threshold, which I actually changed to 0 0.02 right here, we're going to have a kind of motion blur effect as if these two pieces just exploded and you're kind of dazed and confused there for a second. So in order to do this, we need to use a delay frame patch. And with a delay frame patch, you need a receiver because this will send out, because it's blue, this is a sender and it'll send out the delay frame. So whatever you put into here, eventually it will send out. You see there's no output, it's only sending. So then we can receive it here. And this part's a little confusing, but it's not too many patches, so it should be easy enough to follow. So basically we want all the stuff to calculate, be put into the delay frame, and then we want to pull it back out and kind of mix it with the current feed. So because of that, we need a mix patch. And we're going to mix the normal output with this delay frame output. And then we'll plug this directly into the device. And then this texture distortion shader, which calculates all the, the image, needs to go into the render pass of this delay frame. But you can see I can't do it because it's expecting, I think, a texture. So we need to use a shader render pass. And what this does is it converts, I guess it's a shader into a texture. So this is expecting a texture and this right now is a shader. And actually, instead of this branching, this mix goes into this shader. So I got that mixed up. So if we kind of follow this, we calculate the image. It goes all the way through here into the delay frame. And that delay frame is sent back. And then we mix the current feed with the delayed feed. And then that is piped into the device. So if we start turning this up, you can see there's a little bit of a kind of motion blurry effect. And the higher we go, the more this loop kind of feeds on itself. So once you get into the like 0.9, it gets really intense. I think 0.99 is almost invisible. It's, it's so blended that it almost disappears. So you can see it's working. I think 0.9 is maybe as high as you would want to go. So we want this to only happen for a little while. We don't always want to be this blurry. You can see as I scale this, the black kind of smoothly fades out. So we can use the same setup we have down here because we already have under this threshold, it will pulse this animation. And because this is a zero to one value, we can actually use a very similar setup. So let's add another animation patch. And this will be for the alpha. My patches are getting a little messy, but hopefully you're following. So the progress of this will be the alpha. So if we test this, it should go from normal to completely faded out because this is going to go all the way to one. So let's reset and try it out. So you can see it's totally stopped because this value is one. And so it's only using the delay frame and this loop eventually ends essentially because we're only using one of these values. So this setup is working, but it's not the function that we want. It's not behaving quite properly. So let's add a little bit more logic in here. So maybe a good way to set it up is when this is triggered, this animation quickly goes to one. So maybe we only use 0.5 seconds. Just gonna scoot these down. But then we'll have another animation patch. And this one will be a lot slower, let's say four seconds. And we'll subtract this from that. So let's add a subtract patch. So this patch will quickly climb from zero to one, but then this will much more slowly climb and we'll subtract those. So what we should have is the value go quickly up and then slowly fade back down as this is subtracted. So it'll kind of be like an impact and then a fade. 
Hopefully, I didn't actually test this ahead of time, so I hope it works. And it looks like it worked. Maybe it fades out a little quickly because we want to see the actual effect happen for a little while. So I'm going to increase this animation to eight seconds. And I'll reset and try again. Yeah, that's exactly the effect we were going for. We quickly get it really motion blurry and then we smoothly fade it out over eight more seconds. And I think because we're using this motion blur effect, the shockwave kind of disappears. It's kind of hard to see it as the motion blur goes. So what you could do is just add a delay for these two to take effect. So I'll add a delay of maybe just 0.3 seconds. And let's try that one last time. I think you could delay it a little bit more, but that's up to you. I'll let you tinker with this if you want to keep going. But that's all I have for this one. We covered a lot of ground. We did a lot of cool stuff. So, so I hope you're able to take these concepts and do something really cool with it. Actually, I have one more thing to add. When I copy pasted all these receivers for the scale, not all of them actually came through. Looks like this one did. This one was set to none, even though it shows scale here. So I need to change that to scale and change this one to scale. Looks like that one was good. So now when we scale these down, it actually works like how we had it before. So there you go.